Christ, the animals are restless. You get you take one week off from doing these reviews, and you guys lose your fucking minds. Okay. Welcome back to Chaos. I'm not undefeated anymore. In fact, nobody in this league is. Now let's just dive right into that, because, you know, I, I ended up taking a loss here to, to, to Matthew Trousdale, and... You know, he and I have a little bit of a work rivalry going on right now. Um, I won't delve too deep into it, but, you know, I, I'm disappointed I didn't play Frank Gore. That would have gotten me, uh, you know, 15 points, almost 16 points there. But for the most part, my team showed up. Uh, Adrian Peterson was a bit of a bit of a disappointment, but Leonard Fournette, who, uh, who Matthew traded me for Matt Ryan, that's certainly a, uh, a nice thing to have there. Um... Matt got absolutely nothing from Nelson Aguilar. Absolutely jack shit. One target, didn't make the catch. Uh, that kind of offsets the fact that I played Vernon Davis, who had four targets for five fucking yards. So, yeah, at the end of the day, it comes right down to the fact that uh, that his wide receiver of Robert Woods and Michael Thomas... Scored about the same as my trio of Fitzgerald, Galladay, and Evans. Uh, our running backs were fairly similar, but the tight end is really the difference there and the fact that his defense scored 19 fucking points and mine scored negative one. So congratulations to Matthew. Uh, fuck off. I'm not the only undefeated team that lost this week, though. That also goes to Matt Soto. Takes a four-point loss to Darren Pietkowski. Uh, solid games here all around, you know, Christian McCaffrey went off, carry on Johnson went off. Those two combined for what looks like almost 40 points. Um, you know, when you're getting that kind of production from, from two guys going up against Alvin Kamara, and Melvin Ingram, who only scored about 15, maybe 16 points, you know, that that's just going to absolutely get it done every single week. Um, the wide receivers, though, that, that flips in the other direction. Cooper Cup gave gave Soto 23 points. Uh, Thielen, though, just absolutely didn't show up. Only had six yards. He, after the game, you know, has sort of come out saying that, hey, we need to we need to pass the fucking ball. I'd like to make some fucking money here. And it's disappointing that, you know, you draft a guy like Adam Thielen, who was so instrumental in this league last year. He ends up being an absolutely nothing for the first month of the season. Tight ends. Uh, Mark Andrews continues to produce at a really high level. Uh, three out of four weeks this, this year, he's done really well. Um, defense and kickers. You know, a whole lot of... like uh, This kid Sly in, Car in Carolina put up a 12-point game. So that was solid enough for Darren. Um, and nothing really on, well, Austin Hooper on, uh, on Soto's bench probably makes a big difference there. You know, if he plays him instead of Mark Andrews, he gets the win here, but sorry to say that didn't happen. Um, uh, by the same token, if Darren plays Carson Wentz rather than Russell Wilson, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about something different there as well. Uh, we move on to a pair of uh, one in three teams after this week is over as Danny D'Angelo defeats Pete Langworth this week. Uh, really strong game from Danny this week, finally. He gets, an, he gets a great performance out of Aaron Rodgers. First time all year he's scored more than 15 points, and that's something you need to see out of him. Uh, Devontae Adams, his, his number one wide receiver, goes for 180 yards on 10 receptions. That's fantastic. And it's about time that uh, Danny gets some production out of those two. Dalvin Cook has a solid game. Uh, Wayne Gallman, the replacement for Saquon Barkley, puts up t almost 22 points, 63 yards and a touchdown uh, on 18 carries, along with a receiving touchdown and 55 receiving yards. Like, it's a very Saquon Barkley game. And, you know, if he's going to slide right in and be the be the guy that, that Saquon was for this team, that's a huge acquisition for Danny going forward. Um, doesn't get a damn thing out of Jamal Williams. And his defense and kicker puts up a combined 24 points. It's a solid day from, from those two. 
Pete, on the other hand, gets a good game from Phillip Rivers, a good game from James Conner, a fantastic game from Jar- Jarvis Landry, and everyone else just sort of shits the bed. Keenan Allen, only 48 yards. John Ross gets hurt and is on IR. He's gone. Uh, looks like, at le- well, he's gone for at least eight games being on the IR. But he may be done for the season. You know, that, that collarbone injury, you never you never know how bad those things are. Um, 66 yards at a D.D. Westbrook. You know, only only 36 combined yards for Gus Edwards. Um, you know, Jack Doyle had a decent game, but only 22 yards for a touchdown. And his defensive kicker was 17 combined points. Without Rivers, Connor, and Landry, this is a blowout. So it's it's one of those things you, you really want to assess his wide receiving core because those three really disappointed him, and he just lost Ross for arguably the season. Um, he's going to need to find somebody else to plug in there. Again, both these guys fall to, are at one and three, not exactly where you want to be after the first month, but anything can change. Uh, moving on, we do have an 0 and four team in the league. A winless Adam Kirby again this year finishes in finishes with only 85 points. Um, it's it's pretty disappointing that. Adam had Ben Roethlisberger and Juju Smith-Schuster to start the season. Ben gets hurt and has the opportunity to make a couple of trades for a quarterback. Instead goes with Andy Dalton, who gets a negative five and a half points this week. Uh, Not where you want to be there, sir. Not where you want to be at all. He also benches, what is this, A.J. Brown on Tennessee, who goes for 94 yards and two touchdowns, 21 and a half points. Instead, he's playing guys like Christian Kirk, who goes for... 43 total yards or Tyler Boyd for 33 yards or Juju Smith Schuster, who only has 15 yards on the day. Any one of those guys is a replacement and he wins this game. Uh, Great game out of Nick Chubb because without Nick Chubb, Adam is absolutely buried in this matchup. Three touchdowns, 165 yards and 18 reception receiving yards, you know, absolutely ran all over Baltimore's defense. Uh, other side of the coin, you know, Judge Kavanaugh doesn't have a great game. Like, let's be real here. Without Chris Godwin, this thing is ugly. Um, you know, Gardner Minshew is is not great. Uh, Zeke Elliott has an okay game, but only 65 total, total yards with a touchdown. Uh, and the kicker and defense really pushed him over the top with uh, 23 total points. Without those 23 points, he doesn't win this game. Uh, I guess he probably wanted to play Baker Mayfield instead, who went for 340 yards, uh, and definitely wanted to play Cortland Sutton, who went for 62 and two touchdowns. You know, either one of those guys in the lineup, and this is a much better matchup, but much better win for him. But a win's a win. He's at 500. He finishes two and two in the first month. Adam buried at 0 and four. Uh, moving on to the lowest scoring matchup of the week. Dave Langworth's Callahan Auto Parts gets a 69-23 total output over Mike Morris' not-so-machismo, 57.9. Just a really ugly game on both sides here. Uh, Highest scorer was Todd Gurley with 19 points. Um, You know, these guys almost scored as many points on their bench as they did in their lineup with Jameis Winston's 37, almost 38 points on the bench for, for... uh, Morris, instead of, you know, he should have played him instead of Tom Brady, who was up against a really good Buffalo defense. Um, for Dave, Jared Goff had a great game on this, in the same game. Uh, he passed for 517 yards on Dave's bench, where Dak Prescott goes for 223, a pick, and a sack in a no-touchdown performance in New Orleans. Um, you know, just just really, really bad all the way around for both of these guys. Uh, neither one of their, their t- both of their tight ends combined for less than a point. You know, uh, Miko Hardman had negative one and a one point one points. You know, Green Bay's defense had a negative point. New England's defense had twenty five. Like that's the highest scoring output of this whole matchup. Uh, Todd Gurley had the highest performance as an actual player with with nineteen points, but. If these guys are gonna, if these guys are gonna put put out this kind of production, they're just not gonna win very many games. Uh, both these guys sit at two and two, 
and we'll see where they go from here. Final matchup of the week, a surprising 3-1 start from Zelinsky's Auto Parts' Frank Buko, who has not yet made a trade, guys. Let's, let's give credit where it's due here. Frank's gone an entire month without making a trade. Um, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty surprised there. Um, you know, considering that things, did he make a trade? I feel like he did make a trade now that I think about it. Yeah, he did. He traded, uh, he traded for, for, uh, Josh Gordon. He traded away Cortland Sutton and Carlos Hyde for Josh Gordon. So he's made one trade in a month. Um, and if we look at it, it's a pretty fair straight up trade. Um, you know, nothing, nothing really to write home about. Here, Josh Gordon uh, puts up four and a half points for him. Kind of disappointing. Uh, does get a great performance out of Derrick Henry and Matt Stafford. Uh, 27 combined points from his kicker and his defense. That's really the difference here because Gallo was unable to get anything going, you know, beyond Chris Carson and LaShawn McCoy. And Chris Carson was a dangerous play coming into this week considering the three fumbles he had last week. Um... I'd be interested to see if they continue to go with him in Seattle. But, you know, when you when you look at this matchup, not a whole lot left on the bench, but Seattle's defense certainly outplayed Minnesota's defense, and that would have been the correct play um, for Gallo. But at the end of the day, you know, you put out 76 points, you're not going to win very many weeks. You know, it, it, it's a testament to this league that if you score about 100, you've got a good chance to win. It's not a guarantee that you're going to win, but, you know, more times than not, if you score 100 points, you'll win You'll win every week. Um, Frank does, however, lose Terry McLaurin. Looks like he's going to be out for a bit. Um, you know, his, his, his team has a whole bunch of question marks on the bench. And across the lineup, you know, between Tyreek Hill, Josh Allen's concussion, Rex Burkhead in general, Terry McLaurin's hamstring, Josh Gordon has a questionable tag now uh, with with a knee injury, Josh Jacobs at running back has an elbow injury. You know, I'm, I'm sure some of these guys will be fine for next week, but it'll be interesting to see if he's uh, if he's capable of, of of fielding a full lineup against Pete this week. Uh, when all was said and done, uh, I still lead the Budweiser division by two games over Danny. Uh, the Coors division is all 500 or better with Frank leading the way at 3-1. and one. And in the Miller division, it's a tight race there. 3-1 uh, and one, Soto and uh, Matthew Trousdale lead the way there with uh, Dave and Morris both at 500 right, right behind them. Until next week, gentlemen, keep everything chaotic. I hope you have a good week. See you soon.